Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon, and this is theCUBE. We're here at the MIT Information Quality Symposium. What we do at theCUBE is we drop into events like this. We try to extract the signal from the noise. I'm here with my co-host today, Paul Gillen, who will be with me uh, all day today. Michael Nix is here. He's the Director of Analytics at the James M. Jeffords Institute for Quality and Operational Effectiveness at the Fletcher Allen Healthcare Organization. Michael, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate being here. So, we were talking a little bit before you came on and uh, sharing with us your role as the Director of Analytics, but talk about um, the role that healthcare plays in, in analytics and start with really what, what, what your role is within well, thank you. Uh, first of all, Fletcher Allen Healthcare is uh, what's called an integrated delivery system in northern Vermont. We're based out of Burlington. And we deliver care in both the hospital setting as well as uh, physician practices and uh, a number of outreach activities. So we're involved in virtually every aspect of healthcare delivery in the northern portion of New England. And what we are passionate about as a healthcare provider is providing good care. Uh, for our organization, because we are um, servicing a relatively rural uh, activity or rural area, the people that we're dealing with as patients are friends, family, neighbors. So it's very personal in terms of how we are delivering care. And it's very important that the care that we deliver is the best possible care because it's, uh, it's, it's up close and personal for us. So healthcare is probably one of the most information dependent industries. In order to deliver good care, you have to have accurate information. It has to be complete. It has to be timely in order for physicians and other practitioners to make good decisions. What we are as healthcare industry facing is the technology boom that we are experiencing through the rollout of expanded electronic health records or EHRs is an incredible increase in both the span of information as well as the absolute volume of information that is flooding into our provider environments. So give us the, the healthcare 101 and what's happening with electronic medical records. I mean, healthcare is, uh, everybody, it affects everyone, everybody can relate to it, but it's a, it's a complicated situation for a lot of people. They really understand you know, the, the, the plumbing you know, right. behind the wall. So give us the brief overview of what's happening in the industry you know, generally, but specifically with EMR. Well, uh, with the advent of what's called Obamacare, uh, there has been a massive in, uh, increase in the amount of resources that are being put into uh, the electronic capture and distribution of, of information, the EHRs. In the past, many of the uh, healthcare delivery, even in relatively sophisticated <coughs> excuse me, uh, care settings, was done with a mixture of paper and electronics. So there were missing elements. When you went on to an electronic system, there were critical pieces of information that just simply were not there. The physician, the uh, practitioner, the therapist were not seeing the whole picture. With the infusion of the incentive dollars under the uh, Obamacare, as I'll generically call it. Even he calls it that. Even he calls it that. <laughs> um, you know, it's not a disparaging yeah. term. It's basically the, what we refer to. They, there has been a, a, a concerted effort to move healthcare forward in terms of a much higher level of electronic integration of basic in information. And that is the sort of game changer. It's a paradigm shift. It's also a technology challenge. It's also an incredible opportunity because every time patient care is delivered, you are taking a very high risk of uh, incomplete or inaccurate information causing a provider to make the wrong decision. And when you're talking about your own health care, we want to make sure that the right decisions and the right care is delivered in every setting. I might, Michael, I've, I've, heard, I've heard some uh, astonishing numbers about the number of deaths that occur in the U.S. each year because of poor quality data. 180,000 or something like that. Are those numbers real? Uh, th they are very real. And every organization that delivers healthcare is acutely uh, interested in trying to overcome these, these structural obstacles to the delivery of good care. If you, for example, are allergic to a particular medication and a provider does not know that and they administer that, uh, 
medication to you, you could go into like an anaphylactic shock or, or uh, leading to death. So as we think of data quality, we're really thinking about it in terms of the delivery of, of care to, to you, the patient, or to, to Dave here as the patient. What is the implication of not knowing or having the wrong information in terms of making crucial decisions? We all think about what happens if I show up in an emergency department, I'm unconscious, uh, I'm, no one knows me, uh, you, you are at a disadvantage. But even in routine care settings, if there's not complete information, you can't depend on someone remembering your, your own doctor, for example. Do they remember everything about you when they have thousands of oh, patients? Of course not, and, and we have exactly. to remember this about ourselves because I'm sure everybody right. who's watching has had the experience of, having to go, of going exactly. into the doctor. Every time you go into the doctor, you fill out another form and you're asked about the same allergies, the same medications, and so the patient themselves, patients themselves can make mistakes that, that cause yes. data quality problems, but, but also just why is there a need to do that? How close are we to a, a world where people will carry a single medical record with them that is accessible to anyone they want to give it to and where this information only lives in one place? Uh, that is a policy level question that, uh, as we generically say, is well above my pay grade. <laughs> but um, what we are struggling with here in the United States is the fundamental uh, issue of the technology uh, increases and the technology innovations that we have available to us are somewhat constrained by the policy decisions and the legal, uh, the medical legal structures that we must operate under within both the uh, U.S. statutes as well as guidelines from various federal agencies. And that is not a criticism. I think it's just uh, the realization that we as healthcare delivery systems must learn to uh, push back into these policy areas and say, look, these policies are not resulting in the best possible care. Uh, are there ways we can approach privacy policies? Are we ways that we can approach payer issues of uh, uh, proprietary information in such a way that care is delivered at the best possible level of quality by sharing of information now that we are capturing more of it. Uh, are you time. saying that HIPAA and Obamacare are at odds with each other? They are fundamentally a, uh, trying to achieve objectives that do have conflicting outcomes. And as with any public policy, it takes time to work through all the implications of these broad policies. So I believe what we're really talking about is the technology is going to push the policy envelope as well as pushing the, uh, the public perception once they understand what the implications to them as individuals in terms of care delivery uh, are. Absolutely. I, I, I was going to say, and my understanding is from an adoption standpoint that Obamacare, there's stages, right? So stage yes. one was to adopt the software and uh, whatever, you know, whatever right. technical infrastructure and, and sta stage two gets into meaningful use. Is that, is that correct? Can you clarify that and what implications does that have from a data quality standpoint? Well, meaningful use is uh, a three-stage program that was designed as a set of incentive programs to uh, both provide uh, seed funding for the technology movement into more advanced uh, platforms. In other words, to pay for the software and the hardware to really allow organizations who are lagging behind the technology to, to acquire uh, significant uh, and quantifiable increases in capability. Now, once you have a platform, you actually have to use it in a meaningful way, ergo the term meaningful use. What that means is that just having a, a system where people capture information on paper and then maybe somebody scans it into a scanned document, into an electronic file, that isn't really information capture within the scope of it. So it means having tools that are friendly and uh, useful to the providers where it, it has to be part of the clinical workflow. It has to be things that support the good and timely delivery of care. And it cannot be uh, tasks that are just added on to an otherwise chaotic and busy schedule for these providers. So designing effective tools is really what meaningful use is about. Getting it, getting the right tool in front of a provider, and that's what at, at Fletcher Allen, from the very top on down, 
we have spent an awful lot of time and energy and, and I can truthfully say millions of dollars trying to achieve those goals because it is the right thing to do. It is what is needed to deliver good care, although the achievement of meaningful use is has to do with meeting certain uh, guidelines for funding. It really comes back to achieving meaningful use is achieving better care for your patients. Yeah, and there's a, but there's a business case implication as well. Exactly. That, right? Can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, I mean you know, saving lives, as Paul was saying, you're going to, whatever the number is, uh, it's going to improve that, it's going to cut costs, I, 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 would, I, would, I would presume. Have you, do you have visibility on, on that yet? I mean, there's, as I say, there's an implication that that will occur, and there's, there's a carrot and a stick yeah. uh, with the funding and, and so forth, but, but, but do you have, is there light at the end of that tunnel? I think there is light, although it is a very long tunnel mm -hmm. and it is a very dark tunnel because when you are talking about redesigning uh, the, the incredibly complex care delivery systems that have evolved over literally hundreds of years in terms of uh, how care is delivered, and the technology inter innovation is resulting in significant paradigm shifts for some of the practitioners, the more senior and older practitioners, as in any case that you have major change, it means relearning. Uh, for the younger practitioners, it means more uh, uh, fac facilities, you might say, in terms of acceptance of new technology. But healthcare delivery is one of the most complex industries uh, that exists within uh, the whole world. Because when you think of healthcare, it is not just getting a shot. It's things like surgery, it's like therapies, it is um, diagnostics, you have CT scans, you have lab reports or lab uh, studies. In other words, when you look at it, it's about 14 or 15 distinctly different business operations within a delivery system just to do acute care, you know, the traditional hospital setting. So getting all of those pieces and parts to work together in both a synergistic as well as a uh, effective way is really the challenge that every healthcare organization is, is trying to undertake. So the key for us is can we deliver better care? The answer is yes, we are making incremental uh, movements toward better care. We're catching more things earlier, like the, my earlier example having a drug allergy and making sure that that system knows about it and sends a flag that says, oh, you can't give this, this patient this antibiotic because they're allergic to it or some other type of thing. Yes, we are achieving better care, but it is also a very long journey because of the complexity of the medical environment. I, I want to ask you before we run out of time about what's going on. Uh, you, you talked about its complexity. That's just within the the uh, the hospital or the or the uh, the on-site care provider. You all have all the complexity of the supply chain. There are uh, different. Uh, there are insurance companies. There are pharmacies involved. There are uh, all kinds of, of players outside of your direct control who have to exchange data, and data formats uh, consisting uh, making sure the data is is in a consistent format that the, the right fields are being used. There's there's a whole. Uh, uh, model underlying that so that the data that's being exchanged is meaningful to each player in the in the supply chain. What is going on currently to, to, to solve that complexity? Um, great question. Uh, along with the uh, Obamacare, you might say the, the meaningful use aspect, there's a new approach that is being rolled out across the nation. It's called Accountable Care Organizations, or ACOs for short. The idea around an ACO is to uh, have a network that is not a single provider, but basically linking the care delivery systems in multiple organizations where you as a patient might be involved. Uh, at Fletcher Allen, we are uh, involved in the only statewide uh, ACO. We have a, an ACO that we are standing up or stood up in January of this year where we have uh, established a network across the entire 14 hospitals that exist within the state of Vermont, as well as approximately another um, 65 to 70 other provider organizations. The idea is to bring together those different care delivery systems and capabilities into a single stream of information 
so that we can make sure that we do know as much as possible to deliver good care. But that, again, is a monumental task. One just in Vermont. Just in Vermont, which is a relatively <laughs> small uh, population base. Inside an organization, the complexities of getting the multiple systems to talk to one another is uh, enormous. When you start talking about going inter-organizational, as well as creating infrastructure, it's not sexy, it's not easy to understand, but these infrastructure projects that have to take place uh, are absolutely critical to the long-term success of integrated healthcare across the whole continuum. Michael, thanks very much. We're pretty out of time, but really appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspectives in this important topic. And uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. And uh, and good luck with uh, getting to that end of the Thanks. tunnel. And uh, as uh, as Dat Trans said, it's not a project; it never ends. It but, never uh, ends. Thank all you. All right. Thanks again. Thank you, Paul. All right. Keep it right there, everybody. Um, uh, uh, Peter Aiken is up next. We're going to talk uh, about data management and double click on that topic. This is the Cube. I'm Dave Vellante with Paul Gillum. We'll be right back. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in tech news coverage. There are plenty of tech shows that provide new gadgets and talk about the latest in gaming, but those shows are just the tip of the iceberg and we're here for the deep dive. There's a difference between technology consumers and those who live the business day to day. 